everyone and welcome back to my sewing room. I'm Rebecca and today I want to take you outside the sewing room and on a little tour around parts of my house because uh, the question that I get asked the most often uh, when people see all of my various costumes is but how do you store it all? And I know that probably a lot of us as historical costumers have a lot of things to store, probably cosplayers as well, I would assume. Uh, you need closet space, you need places to store things, you need solutions, you need organization. So um, I wanted to show you how what I do to store all of my costumes, which are scattered in various places around my house. And Lion just walked into the room. Um, and so I wanted to show you where I put my dresses, where I put my accessories, where I put my undergarments, where I put jewelry, though that's actually the one area that really needs improvement. But uh, let's, uh, let's go on a little tour around my house. By the way, my house is very, very small. It's only 970 square feet. So for those of you with larger houses, it's probably a lot easier for you to store things. But um, for those of us in tiny little houses, this is a good, uh, good example, I think, of how to store things. So you can still keep things organized, you can still find things, things are still accessible, you don't have to keep them in a storage unit or in an attic or anything like that. So uh, let's get going. We are going to start our tour today with the small closet that is actually in the sewing room. In this closet is where I store pretty much all of my silk gowns as well as some of the wool. Uh, in, in addition, any of the wool or silk or occasionally other fabric gowns that are very, very long hang in this closet because the bar has actually been raised. Um, I will stand next to it so you can see how tall it is. I am 5'10 and the bar I have to reach up to get. So the bar has actually been raised so that uh, all of the gowns that are particularly long can hang and except for the trained gowns, uh, they can actually hang without touching the ground. That said, the ones that do have trains still have to pile on the ground, but I keep this closet closed at all times um, so that cats, etc., cannot get in this closet. So uh, I'm going to try to show you individually some of the items in this closet. Uh, this will be difficult because I will be holding the camera at the same time as showing you. So I apologize if anything is shaky or hard to see. So I'm going to try to show you some of the items in here while still holding the camera. Um, this may be difficult and I apologize if this looks really bad. But this closet does go back about a foot on either side of the doorway. So there's some of the things are a little bit inaccessible and I have to slide stuff around. So although this closet does look pretty jam packed, um, it does need a little bit of room just so that I can access everything. Though I do tend to keep the things that I wear most often in the center because I love rewearing costumes. Isn't that kind of the point? You spend all this work on it. So you should kind of rewear things. So. Um, some of the things that are in here, this is the wool with fur trim bustle, the green bustle that doesn't want to show up on the lighting on here, um, that gets all of the comments on Instagram every time this is a fashion plate copy. Um, and I hope you're not getting seasick. seasick. This is one of the lone cotton items in here, but it uh, is my ice cream social blouse and that's because it goes with the wool skirt. Um, this is a stripey bustle that I made a couple years ago, 1830s archery dress, this is the burgundy dress that you have probably all seen the videos of, if not I will link to those. This is my um, mid uh, 19th century child's dress, mid Victorian child's dress, kind of 1860s. This is the one that I've spent the most work on out of any gown probably saw this one if you saw my um, making copies of things <laughs> uh, video. This is Regency Pellerine, 1830s dress, plaid dress, 1840s dress. We've got an 1890s gala gown in here, Titanic dress, deck dress, and this is the skirt of my 
17th century dress. That's pretty much all that's showing in here. I'm going to try to back up a little so you can get a wider view. Um, and also, if you notice up top, I also do have some hats on here. These are kind of smaller hats or hats I haven't done anything with yet, so I don't feel the need to keep them nicely in boxes. But I do have like some blanks, and I also keep my Rapunzel wig up here, which is getting a little ratty, but um, it's really the only place I have found to keep her. So that is this closet. While we're in the sewing room, I did cover some of this in uh, the initial sewing room tour video, <clears throat> but I keep hat boxes labeled with all of the hats inside them. And the hat boxes and also some shoe boxes they live all around the top of my sewing room. So uh, there are some hat boxes elsewhere. We will get to those though. There are only a few other accessories kept in the sewing room itself. Fans and hat pins go here. Also ostrich feathers, which can be used as an accessory. Um, and my muff is here, my fur muff. Um, and then I also have around my messy room. I keep gloves and handkerchiefs in these boxes here, which is part of the cubby system that makes up the side of my sewing table. This portion of the tour may be quite dark as my hall is not well lit, but in the hallway I have a sort of shelf area underneath the coats. This is where all of my hair uh, not hair pieces, but hair extensions and braids and everything go. They get shoved into this drawer, the curly pieces as well. Anything that is particularly styled gets stored in a hat box. Uh, for example, the one that you saw in a couple of videos ago that I used the Victorian comb product to style, that is stored elsewhere. On top of that is a box that has a lot of small accessories in it. So there are some belts, aprons, a wand, um, some Harry, other Harry Potter accessories, uh, fichu, lots of small, small things get stored in there that are not gloves or handkerchiefs. Next along in the hallway we have the coat closet. This coat closet holds vintage coats, fur coats, uh, there's a 1960s vintage coat here, fur coat here, another one in the garment bag. Um, I also have my Victorian sort of capelet here, my Regency marabou trimmed here, and then there's also other things that are made out of wool here. So we have skating bustle, which is a fur trimmed wool skating bustle that I have recently posted pictures of on Instagram, so check out over there at Lady Rebecca Fashions. This honestly should go out to a different place because it doesn't need to be in here. This is a linen skirt. Um, I feel confident keeping linen not inside necessarily. This is a wool spencer and then this is my wool riding habit skirt and in here is the jacket. It stays in a little garment bag. And this, oh, this is actually my Mary Poppins dress, which is silk organza. So this is, uh, but because it's short, I keep it in this closet in a garment bag instead of keeping it in the closet with the rest of my silks. Up above, we have hats and feathers. My large feathers that don't fit in my little feather box go here. And this is my giant Edwardian hat. We've got a Regency bonnet in here. Actually, there's a, a Regency hat below that too, but I don't want to get to it. Also, all of my Mickey ears <laughs> live here and my giant muff that matches the Regency um, pelerine goes here as well. So that is the closet in the hallway, the wool and fur closet, if you will. Here's a very brief look at my hall linen closet, which this is my brother's old Colonial Williamsburg hat, actually, but does also contain some other hats of mine. Um, this is my giant Romantic Era bonnet, 1830s bonnet, which I keep wrapped up in two Joann's bags to help it fit. We've got an 1830s archery hat, Mary Poppins hat, and I believe the one in the bag right here goes with my riding habit. 
um, which isn't quite a writing habit. It's the it's kind of a copy of the Vijay Lebrun red um, habit-ish portrait. So it's the hat that she wears in that picture. And that's all that I keep in the linen closet costume-wise. The hats that are in these hall closets are only there because they are just way too huge to fit in any hat boxes that I own. Someday I may make some large hat boxes, but for now they'll live in the closets. The next stop on the tour is my bedroom. So obviously we have a very glitzy tiara shelf here and other jewelry. As I mentioned, uh, jewelry is the one thing that I really need to work on figuring out how to store it because my jewelry box is super overflowing. Oh, and look, it's the fashion plate. Um, so that's going to be coming soon. But in the meantime, this dresser drawer here is actually just all full of costuming things. So in the top drawer, I have socks and reticules and uh, a few other things, but it's mostly just socks and reticules. The middle or second drawer here is uh, what I like to call my shapewear drawer because it has things like my lobster tail bustle and bum pads and 1830s sleeve supports, more bum pads, uh, panniers or pocket hoops really in this case, pocket hoops, um, all sorts of padded Shapewear. So there's really not a lot in this drawer, but everything is padded, so it does take up quite a bit of room. Let's put that bustle back in. Oh, Lion would like you to know that he came to visit. Hey, Lion! Yeah! Say hi! Oh, good boy. Okay, in the third drawer down, we have undergarments. Scandalous. Uh, Lion, calm down! Come to, this is what Lion does. He collapses when you pet his butt. So in this drawer we have undergarments, we have chemises, and drawers, and corset covers, and all sorts of things, almost all of which are white or off-white, so it looks super uninteresting. The bottom drawer, which is jam-packed, is corsets. Uh, we've got my new stays. Uh, below that, I think, are my 1870s corsets. But it has, literally every single one of my corsets is in this drawer, which is why it's super, super full and difficult to close. And that is basically everything that is kept in my room. I do also have shoes, uh, boots specifically, that I keep in the closet, but I don't think it's going to be possible to even see that. Uh, there's a shelf way back in the corner here in this closet. And I keep all of my theater shoes, uh, you know, character shoes, jazz shoes, dance shoes, etc. And also my um, costuming boots way back there. And now we come to the last part of the closet storage tour. This is a closet that I have built in my garage. Uh, this used to be kind of a wood benchy workshop area. And I have turned it into a costume closet. So all of the costumes out here are bagged because I want to protect them. Oh, sorry, I'm spinning so fast. Uh, they're all in bags and also they're all cotton or polyester to begin with because I don't really like to trust uh, silks and wools to out here just in case um, I don't want anything to uh, go wrong since those are more fragile fabrics. But Everything is bagged in here. Either there's windows so I can kind of see what they are or some of them have labels so that I can see what goes in there. And uh, there's plenty of room for more, which is great. But of course, a lot of the things I make now are silk, so that's less great. Uh, but especially like cosplay type stuff goes out here. This is Princess Anna, Frozen Fever in there. This is Jane in here. Uh, I've got my Elizabeth Swan in one of these longer bags. Um, so all of those that have materials that are not, um, you know, natural, or they can be natural fibers, they can be cotton, but I don't, anything that's not silk or wool. I also have a couple of antique hat boxes out here. These hat boxes are too large to fit on my shelves inside. Uh, they do have a couple of hats in them, but they're not stocked full like the others. And I also have plenty of room for more storage up here. 
So what I did with this room was I hacked out the workbenches that had been in here prior. The walls already existed, but I hacked out the workbenches and I put up the closet shelving and rods myself. This sort of a rough plywood shelving unit had already been in the room um, fastened to the wall on the right, so I just moved it to the center so that I could get all sorts of nice storage. And there's even drawer and tub storage here that is not fully used should I need to use it and things like all my old Beanie Babies come out here too. Um, but this is where I store a lot of my stuff and it's really easy to just come into the garage and find what I need. All of my petticoats are stored out here too. Um, all those cotton undergarments. I think literally this is entirely filled with petticoats and that's not even all of the petticoats in there but like my corded one and my ruffled one are both in there. Um, you can see a an Edwardian princess slip in there and I believe that's my chemise of Lorraine actually behind it with another Edwardian dress. So um, yeah, this is the big storage room if you have space in your garage and the ability to do this, highly, highly recommend it, especially if you live in a tiny house like I do. Oh, and because I'm not an electrician, this power strip had already been mounted to the wall and I took my old sewing desk lamp and attached it to the shelf and ran the cord up along the wall so that it's easy to just hit the power strip and turn off the light. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful for you so that you can maybe have a few ideas to take with you for uh, helping to organize your own costume collection, whether that is for cosplay or for historical costuming. Uh, if this was helpful, helpful to you, please go ahead and click the thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this or on other costuming content, please go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you'll be notified every time I post a video. You can also follow me on Instagram at Lady Rebecca Fashions, which I will link here, so that you can see a lot more posts from me. I post there uh, one, sometimes even twice a day, and it's just filled with costuming content and progress updates and everything. A lot of pictures of this and, uh, and also the costumes that I've already completed, which is why I get asked the how do you store your costumes question all the time. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me today, and I will see you in my next video. Happy sewing!